Now that we have all of the backend pieces installed, we have Ruby, Ruby Gems, Rails, and MySQL, we need to make sure that we have a web server. Of course, we need to have a web server in production. When we put our application out on the web, users will type a URL into their browser, which will contact our web server, which will then talk to our Rails application to determine what response or web page it should return to the user. Well, that same setup will be true in development as well. We'll have a browser talking to a web server, talking to our Rails app. So the question is, which server to choose for our development environment? Let's look at the choices. There's Apache, either version one or two. There's a lot to recommend Apache. It is the most popular web server. And there's also a piece of software for Apache called Passenger, or sometimes referred to as Mod Rails. That's an Apache module that lets Apache and Rails communicate. And that's a great and very popular combination. Most Rails websites out in production are using that combination, but there are others to consider too. There's Nginx. Nginx is a fairly new competitor to Apache with a lot of the same features, which is quickly gaining in popularity. There's Lighty, which is fast, but has less features. There's Microsoft's IIS, which is a popular web server, but doesn't have as much support for Rails as it should. If you decide to go with IIS, you'll want to go to their website for tips on how to make it work. And then last of all, there's Webbrick web server that almost no one has heard of, and it's the one that I'm going to recommend for us to use during development. It's a very simple web server, something so simple that you would never want to put it in production, but when it's just us and we're the only user who's using the web server, it works perfectly fine. And most importantly, it ships with Rails. It's pre-installed, pre-configured, and couldn't be any easier to use. So while you could use any one of these, Webbrick is probably going to be the easiest for you to use, and it's the one that I'm going to be using throughout this tutorial.